My lord and my god, I firm a belief that you are here. That you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon for my sins, and for the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My mother immaculate, Saint Joseph my father and lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. My niece told me the joke about Little Red Riding Hood. Apparently, when she found her granny in bed, she commented, Grandma, what big arms you have. And the granny replied, All the better to hug you with, my dear. And the girl insisted, Grandma, what big ears you have. All the better to hear you with, my child. And the girl continued to insist. Grandma, what big eyes you have. All the better to see you with, my child. Granny, what big teeth you have. To which the granny replied bluntly, Listen, girl, did you come to visit me or to criticize me? <laughs> well, I can understand her frustration. <laughs> And I remember during a pilgrimage to Santiago in Spain with a group of young lads. There was one of them who was like Little Red Riding Hood in the joke. Everything was terrible. If it rained, because it was wet. If it was sunny, because it was hot. If it was crowded, because there were too many people. And if we were alone, because it was deserted. <laughs> Of course, he spoke out against mosquitoes and midges, against birds, cows, sheep, against the mud, the food, the roads, the signs, the wind, and even the taste of the milk. <laughs> I mean, for me, it was fine. I practiced a lot of words I don't use much, like horrendous, atrocious, rotten, execrable, disgusting, gross, nasty, revolting. Repugnant, terrible, awful, repulsive, distasteful, foul, unpleasant, horrid, sickening, unbearable. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. This came to mind when I read the gospel that you, Jesus, proposed to us today. Each tree is known by its own fruit. You say, figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person out of the good treasure of the heart produces good, and the evil person out of evil treasure produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. Well, it could be a good time now that we are in conversation with you, Jesus, to think precisely about that, about what comes out of my mouth, about the treasure. I have in my heart. Think about it. What have I said lately? In my last conversations, the last things I said, what did I bring out of my heart? Did I complain? Did I gossip? Did I say unkind things? Was I sarcastic with some members of my family? Did I answer back to my parents? Did I interrupt other people when they talked to me? Or else, did I encourage someone? Did I welcome or wish a good day to someone? Did I speak charitably about someone? In other words, what effect do my words have on other people? By the fruit, we can know the tree, you say to us, Jesus. Well, what kind of fruit do I offer to the people around me? Is it the fruit people want to taste? Or, like sour grapes, they would rather not have them? You see, if my heart is full of charity, then I speak charity. If it is full of hope, it speaks hope. If it is full of God, it speaks God. But it is full of myself, well, 
That's when complaints and criticism and sarcasm come out. There is an old Spanish book called El Bosque Animado, The Enchanted Forest, or sometimes also translated as The Animated Forest, by Wenceslao Fernández Flores. And he tells the story of a forest in which the most different species of trees and bushes and shrubs live in harmony. They speak to each other, they sing together with the winds, they tell each other stories and provide a home to many species of birds and animals. And he explains that one day, some men came to plant a telegraph pole. <laughs> they laid the cable lines and left. And the whole forest was in awe. They had never seen a tree like that. And after a few days of expectation, the trees started discussing and wondering about the new residents. And finally they asked the pine tree, who was next to it, to inquire. And the pine tree asked the pole, Would you like to sing with us? I never sing, replied the pole. <laughs> and a bit later, bored as it was, the pole went on the attack. He told the trees that he was the only useful one in the forest. He was holding the lines whilst the other trees were all good for nothing, singing and chatting all day. The pole went on to criticize absolutely everything. Nothing pleased him. Everything was wrong in that forest. <laughs> of course, the joy in that forest vanished, and the peace as well. The story goes on for a while until one day, another group of men came to check on the pole and they found it eaten by termites and worms. And so, they took it down. And on falling, the pole broke into pieces. It was dry. And the trees anxiously asked the pine tree to tell them what was going on. What did it have inside? They asked the pine tree. Woodworm. And what else? Dust. And what else? Death. It has always been dead. And the story continues by saying that joy came back to the forest that day. You see, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Well, nobody wants to be a grumpy pole, right? <laughs> But at times, we're not careful about what we say or how we say things. Do you remember the teaching of the Apostle James in his epistle? He writes, If we put bits into the mouths of horses, to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at the ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder. And concludes, So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. So, the Apostle insists on the same idea. Watch your mouth. Think about what you say, how you say it. Take control of the tongue. In a way, if we take control of what comes out of the mouth, we may be able to purify what is inside. If you grow fruits or vegetables, you have experience. Even a good tree still has some fruits that aren't so good. They might have gone off or been attacked by moths or scorched by the sun. But when we share the fruit of our garden, we try to pick the best fruits to share with our family and friends. Well, Jesus, I want to do that when I speak and share my thoughts. Mary, my mother immaculate, help me to always offer the best fruits I have in my heart when I speak to others. To speak always like a child of God should. To be always charitable in what I say and how I say it. And help me to increase the good fruits of my heart 
and share them with those around me. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.